Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to another edition of Adi Chopin Live, the official half of his podcast, a special edition. We had to pull this brother out. We're not in the studio today. We're at Smade Lounge. So shout out to my Smade Lounge crew. Shout out to everybody, Afri Media, Nana, the whole team. As always, wherever you get the podcast, make sure you subscribe. If it's on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, anywhere you either watch or listen. Subscribe. Let's keep the numbers going up because the bigger we get, we don't have to wait for anybody to support our own people and push them to the next level. Anyway, coming back now, this is brought to you by the Energy God Energy Drink. Make sure you drink and be refreshed, stay energized. This is for us, by us. Support energygod.com. Now, chilling with me is a very, very interesting character. One of the entertainers that have exploded out of the scene in the last couple of years. For me, I heard the music, didn't even see the face, didn't know who was behind it. The name started to ring bells. People were calling me up. I sprints this, that, and the third. They said, there's a guy running the streets of Lagos. They said, no Sheyi, no vibes. Welcome, Sheyi Vibes! <laughs> eh? How you doing, brother? Yeah, I'm good. You're looking very cool and calm this time. All the times when I see your videos and I see your pictures, it's like, you're ready for war. You got the gold teeth blinging. Your locks are long. But this time, this is the cool shade. This is the lover boy shade. Have you been, is it because you've been hanging around London girls now that your face is calm? <laughs> I've just been chilling. Mm -hmm. How have you, you know, you're, you've been in London for a couple of days. You've got a, a big show coming up. First of all, how does it feel? This is your first time in the UK, am I right? Or you've been here before? No, no, no. This is my, this is like my third time in the UK. Because I remember you came like two years ago. What listening? There was one listening party that we saw. Sona. Yeah, I was, I was asleep. Sleep now, so many times. And you went to Sona. You, you, we met at Sona. Sona's in this. Summer first. Mm, Manchester. Manchester. How does it feel coming from Lagos? You know, doing the madness that you're doing out here and traveling into the UK, and also getting the same type of reception where people are booking you for different shows. How does that feel for you? Yeah, I feel like, you know, I'm still like, you know, you know, I'm getting closer every day. Sin. I keep it steady. Step by step. Yeah, yeah. that's calm. It's calm to keep it steady. Absolutely, absolutely. I like that. Let's talk about you, man. Like I told, you know, I told your manager, I'm like, I want to know Shea Vibes. I want to know the story. I want to know the background. I want to know what makes you tick. What is the inspiration? Let's start from where Shea comes from. Where was Shea born and raised? Yeah. I was born and brought up in Kitsu. Mm. Yeah. I like where side or just main <laughs> Kitsu. Wow. Yeah, I was born there. I was, yeah, I grew up. In Kitsu. So when I was like, you know, when I thought like Titin, you had to move down to Kudu. Oh. Based on, you know, one or two issues. Oh. Yeah. So I had to do it. Follow my mom to Kudu and start another life, you know. And start another life. So I was in S S one. When I started music professionally and I was like twenty four. Wow. Started music professionally, it sounds very simple for you. You know, I was in S S one when I started music professionally. What exactly pulled you into music how did that begin for you well, did you just wake up one day who inspired Shea vibes what did you see that made you think you can do this yeah. that's like you know that question is like man i used to i used to i used to love um musicians like you know yeah. i'm this small small young boy that i used to love musicians i love the way they do their musical videos i like the way you know you know, they are so fulfilling. So mm. I like I like what they're doing. But actually I didn't know I was having this this melody in me or in some actual point. So I had a street brother, his name is Neroko, so he had to take him to the studio one day. Um that was just an excursion to the studio. Mm. Yeah, I didn't want to sing. So well, see what's happening here. Yeah. Was like what like what was it like to to record a song? Mm. Like, you know, what was the mic looking like? What was the speaker looking like? Oh, mm. nice. So he so he said, Okay. From to the studio, you see. So I went to the studio with him. From there, I mean, I got inspired. Yeah. Because I love the setting. I just want to be among the setting. Yeah. 
So yeah, I, I told my mom like, you know, so he said, I support you in anything you do, you just have to ask school, yeah? So that's how I started. So I created my first song when I was 14. Wow. Talk to me about Ekorodu, because it looks like that's where she became a young man. Even though you were born in K2, Ekorodu was where you saw life. What is Ekorodu like? What was life like in Ekorodu? Yeah, uh, back home in Ekorodu, man, well, it's, it's, it's inspiring mm. to, you know, the struggle. I made the struggle inspire me. I didn't let the struggle weigh me down. Mm. So I let the struggle inspire me, like, to do more. What can I see? What can I feel? So I in my music. So that's like, you know, that's why a lot of people are like, oh, she rise. Like, here, here. It's because where I'm coming from is so deep. So, you know, I sing what I feel, what I see. Mm. You know, oh, where I'm going, mm. what to be. Mm. Like, you know, like I say in one of my songs, that for me, low in billion dollars. Oh. It's like, you know, I want to be a billionaire. So I put in my song. Yeah. So basically, just things around me, what I can think of, like, you know, things I see where I grew from. Mm. So it could do as a particular big role that, huh. you know, played big role in my life. You know, I mm. shall forget it could. Was there any musician? In that area, you know, a lot of us, regardless of where we're from and what we're inspired by, where we also grew up, sometimes we're lucky to have somebody that's doing what you eventually stepped into doing. That gave you a little, that that type of feeling. Was there anybody, any artist at all that was popular in Ikuruduo, in your environment, that made you think, if he can do it, I can do it too. Yeah. Um, the likes of Shantizu. Oh. Shout out to him also. Shantizu is from the crew. Yeah, he used to see the crew. Shout out to him. You know, the stars, no. Back home, I used to feel inspired. Okay, one day I can do this as, as an accrued boy. Oh. You know, it could be so underrated. Like, facts. Facts. It's so underrated. It's like you and for the crew do it. They think, yeah, you know, they didn't <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to put that out of my brain. Oh. You can't kind of come from the ghetto when you're classic, like oh. you're classic at the same time. So when <laughs> shout out to Adelaide like, Shantizu, like you know, there are so many of them, like you know, from the crew do like Q dots. Wow. Yeah. yeah, like I love I love the sound also, like, you know. Someone someone was describing you. I was reading one article once when I was trying to find out about Shay Vibes. You obviously call your type of music afro soul because it's afro and it has soul in it but someone also said you know there's a little bit of aquala in your music there's a little bit of fuji in that music there's a little bit of what are the mixtures that makes she vibes the type of musician that you are what genres did you pull from to make your style of music first of all i was to say afro yeah. so, you know I, I I watched his documentary, you know, you know, the way he reals his music. Mm. It's quiet. It's quite a part. I was. You know. Yeah, like, you know, I like I like I like the callings in alphabets, you know, the futures, you know. It's the first sound like, you know, I have so but Fuji indeed, yes. Mm. Fuji is like, you know, I've been I've been on this my Fuji jokes since like I I was young, huh. but you know, I mean, like, oh, like, I can, I can, I can be in a place. I use Fuji like to sing for them for like thirty minutes. Are you for real? That you can freestyle and just I enter Lamba. I've been on my Fuji juice since when I was young, so it's like an easy thing. Like, it's not because I was doing now. It's because but I it's just my to So, you know, my dad used to play um, barista. My dad used to play Ayla, used to play Sony Adi fans. I used to listen to a lot of you know, Asian songs also. Mm. Yeah, and that's from my dad. Growing up, I listened to those kind of music also. Absolutely. I listened to foreign foreign music. So he just blended everything together. Facts. Now let's talk about you said you made your first song at age fourteen. What was the reaction from your friends 
and maybe your family, when they heard the first recording of a Shea Vibe song? You know, you know that actually, actually made me go into more music. Oh. Yes, because uh, in back back home here, yeah, if you are not doing the thing right, they will tell you. <laughs> She's still in the last habit. Mm. So like, ah, uh, so it's not music. <laughs> but at that age, everyone likes my sound, so so that helped my confidence. Because mm. I was just fourteen, so wow. that that helped my confidence a lot. That okay, I'm doing this, like you know. So I checked the people that that's done in the past. Uh, they blew up eighteen, nineteen. So I told myself. Will I blew bl- bl- up before 20. Wow. Yeah. So this year, um, that year, 2020, I was supposed to be 20 years old. So I came up with a song, God Sent. So before my birthday. So yeah, it's like, I had no promotions. I had no manager. I know no one in, in, in the music scene. Like, you know, it's just me and the Korean people saying, I know how to sing. Hmm. So it's just, it's crazy to that extent. So my we started changing on, I don't know. You know, started telling me I had the music in Suli, I had the music in on the island. He told her, he drew to me like everywhere on the streets. I can't even pass through Bullies in the Korean minute. So I had to move to the island. Then I knew how to do more. Hey, that was the that was the message, the encouragement for you that almost um, if you like say this thing was because me not having anyone putting me on a promoting you. Yeah, putting me on, on track that okay, post your stuff like this. You don't have to look like this. You yeah. don't clothes. No, there are no chances for that. Like, you know, just have to wear anything you see and do that. just post. Yeah, so. See, like, last year, I, I, I did just now. That's shit I'm beyond. Like, you know. Yeah. Talk to me about, you know, you mentioned that God said that's the record that obviously. How did you even upload it? Wait, how did that song get out? Yeah, that song, that song was only uploaded on Audio Wow. Yes. And some other site like webstudio.com. Those free websites. That's my, my guy, um, blog. Yeah. Like his own. Yeah. Webstudio.com. Yeah. I, have to, I, I wanted to be, I remember I wanted to pay some particular blogs also like Nigeria Day. There was a guy that has an RC that said he knows Nigeria Day. <laughs> I give him my money like 10,000 uh, to the TV. So, I mean, you know, that, that song, that song actually grew up on Ordinox too. And on the street because the first the first like i uploaded it first on audio mark so it's like it's not app music hmm. like so if, if everyone was looking for it's like is it only audio mark and people come to me and say she you're not putting your musical the music was wrong because i'm not gonna start even know how to get there yeah i just know i have to go to this new sing songs but i don't know how to actually so i put out on my instagram and you know, people take it from there, my stress, and I, I'm already out there. So it's like, okay, now I have to put music on Apple Music. I have to do this, I have to do that. So on along till I met a distributor company, like, you know, oh. they can actually put my stuff in place. Wow. Now, obviously, you said 2020, that was exactly the pandemic. That's when everybody was shut down. That's when I was speaking to Ice Prince, he's mentioning your name maybe 2021 or something, the pandemic slowed everybody down. A lot of people couldn't do what they were normally doing. But that was the year when the door opened for you. Whoa. How did you see the pandemic? What was your own take about the challenges and the difficulties? How did it affect you? Yeah, the pandemic, you know, it affected a lot of people. Like, if you even read through, like, you know, at that particular point, it's like the word stopped so well uh, yeah my life i didn't let it stop <laughs> that was time i was actually recording all the songs that actually kept me to like one year after i had go since i already had 127 love song like pd like you know all the songs i know but they were in the yeah, audience I had it i was taking like money for shows i was taking the money for the stream also <laughs> you know like, I have fan base that is loyal to me. I'm loyal to them. Like, I'm their boy. And, and you know, they see me, okay, if I drop a song. They carry it. Yeah, so, like, you know, I appreciate that. I value that a lot. 
So it's not because I want to be number one on this chart or no. No, basically, my fan gives me what I want. Like, hmm. I'll be very honest with you. Your fan base is the reason why people like myself outside of Nigeria found out about Shady Vibes. They would say that there's a guy tearing up Ikoro, tearing up the main land. This guy, Shady Vibes. Is, and then I saw some clips on social media in 2021. Maybe you were at a show on the mainland with thousands of people. Talk to me about that love that, you know, that, that, that bond between you and your fans. How strong that bond is. Man, I just pray for the Lord to increase, you know, because that love is my energy. Mm. Apart from my mom, my dad, and my family, you know, it's just the families that, like, you know, they're keeping me alive, you know, <laughs> I can't do without it. <laughs> so I make sure, you know, I still there to my families, you know, they do, they do the same thing to me. Facts. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not forgetting that. After God, my mom, you know, my dad, my families, and my, after my family, my families, that's amazing. That's important to my life. So I don't, I don't joke. How is your success now? You're shining. I see the blade. I see the gold tune. I see everything. You're in the UK. You're shining. How has your success affected your family? Like, how have you been able to impact your family with the blessings of the, the you know, your musical success? What have you, what are the, some of the things that you've done? I see you smiling there. Some of the things that you've done that makes you happy and makes you proud. Yeah. Shout out to my family. Shout out to my mom, my dad, my brother, like, you know. Yeah, you know, this trick will beat. Like, yes, every part, yeah. everywhere in my life. So, you know, I do in the music for my family also. For my, for my, like, in my family is myself, my family. Yeah. So, um, I, I, I bought, I bought my mom a house before she passed, like, four months ago. Wow. Yes. So, it's supposed to be a surprise for her, then, you know, you know, as on guard. So, it's like, you know, my family, since, since, since I dropped my first album, The Billion Dollar Baby. Yeah. My family has been you know, thankful. Okay. Thank you to God you know, for, for the blessings, like, you know, I know where I am. Just last, last eight months ago, it's like, hey, it's crazy, like, the growth is rapid. Yeah. So, my family appreciate God from me, like, you know, they see me like, go sent to them also. Yeah, yeah. Family first. Family first. You mentioned my condolences um, to you and your family about the passing of your mom. You mentioned that. I know at a time, uh, your manager also said that you had put a stop to work recording which was rightly so. You took time away from from the business. How was that loss? How important was your mom to you? And how has that loss affected she? And my mom is just everything. You know, I don't want to talk about how to my son get emotional. Oh. But you know, <laughs> I would say it affected me. You know, the last two albums I drew. Like, you know, like, and that came out two albums. Patrick, every other song with the album, Man of the Year, Deja Vu, oh. Fuji Interlude, everything was supposed to drop in March, but you know, that actually put a stop to like, you know, everything. Like, you know, I was supposed to have a tour in the UK. Yes. And then, yep. Yeah. Me. Yep. Yeah. I was going to which led to the Indigo. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. But you know, I'm still blessed. I know my mom's spirit always with me, like, in God. Facts. Facts. You talked about the album, I can only come to like, you are probably the first artist um, since DMX to drop two albums in the space of six months and both albums top the charts in their, in their own area. When, whose decision was it to say, listen, we're gonna give them these two albums back to back. Was it yours, was it management? And, and what was your thoughts around dropping that much music within a short space of time? Yeah, I think I started out last year in November. I dropped that first, I dropped the last December. In January, I dropped another mixtape. Yep. 
Then coming back after my mom passed, I drove her to like, you know, yeah. kill, come back. That was like five life projects. Like it's months. But it's not like, you know, the idea, the idea is still, you know, it's my it's my idea, but the first push, the first push, like a push was from my manager saying, um, do, don't you think you have to drop an album? That was last year. So I didn't actually believe that I was supposed to drop an album. I, I think, okay, let me see drop an EP, like, you know. Oh. For I just, I just hear it on the advice, like, okay. Have that much energy. Do something different. Um, should, like, you know, do this. So I put my first superior out. But, you know, I love the energy. I love the energy. I'm the type of person that I like to express or I feel like in real life what I'm doing, you know what I'm saying. So there's a lot of stories to be told. So I can't, I can't wait, I can't wait for six months and drop one single. I'll wait for another eight months to drop another single. I can't do that. So I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, no, I can't do that. I use my music to do a lot of things. Fella said, don't play, don't, don't, don't play with music, you die, yeah? Eh? Mm. That's what Fela said. So I don't play with my music, like, you know, at all. Every other song that make has a lot of minutes. Just put out any which word you want me to say the mirror for you. Oh. Yeah, so um um it's just basically basically it's my like you know wild no. passion like you know. I love the album drop dropping everything like you know. I want I want people to know there's a lot of content to soak into of conversation like you know. I still have a lot of things to say. I went to um I think it was Poland a couple of weeks ago. And, um, you know, shout out to KNT Entertainment Management. And the DJ dropped Chance in Poland. I recorded the video. I think I must have tied you in the story. Man. They went crazy. They happened. They, 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 you know, even people that are not Yoruba, that don't understand, they, how does it feel when you see the reaction of your fans to your music when they're going crazy to these lyrics? Whoa, how, how does that make you feel? I just feel anytime I see out, uh, like outside I was singing to my song, like, you know, vibing to my song, we making my I just feel I still have to do more. Yeah. Like, you know, that's not the limits. I just I, I appreciate that also, yeah. But, you know, I know that's not the limits. You know, I still know after my Indigo, I still have to go harder. I still know after the talk I still later on, I still have to go harder, like, you know, you know, breaking more boundaries. Absolutely, absolutely. Chance, talk to me about that record. What, That's, what, what was it? That's the absolute alphabet also, I like, can. You know, the sound was inspired by, by, by the filler, filler, like, you know, the fella choir like the back. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's, like, it's like I'm listening to some fella back on my So that the that the although although I was supposed to have a song on my album and I didn't have that song on my album and I asked to coach us now. Like two days to the album from true. So that song is like I just made it on like you know on an alphabet note. Uh, it's I feel but I heard the those female backup singers now. I can hear it. But if you didn't explain it like that, I wouldn't have even gone there at all. But now I get that. So so basically the choir backup I use in all, most of my song like all my song inspired by Phil Akuti. Like you can actually trace it back to us like you know, I love my mm. Like, you know, when you listen to their songs, you, know, you listen to their backups also. You hear the uh, There's one popular backups in and again, so back up your song, even the Fuji aspects, you know. So it's like they require backups ever since, like, you know, way back when there's no shit. So it's like I'm inspired mostly by Fela Kuti, and you know, the Fuji sound also like inspires me, also like helped me. I sound also I have, I have some Fuji, Fuji sound in me, and at the same time, you know. I can't do any other genres of, of music. I don't know. Like, you know, the youth. I've listened, I've listened to some of music from 
your first EP, no shit, no vibes. There's Afro beats, Afro soul. There's Afro now is the Ama Piano vibe with the Afro beat sound. So anybody that listens to your catalog that's just not a new fan would find an array of sounds in there, which is, you know, for, that's one of the reasons why people need to go and do their research and enjoy you know, the catalog, rather than just the one or two that they are listening to at the clubs now. One of the other moments last year that caught our attention worldwide was with your brother, Brian Boy. I saw him with you two days ago, where he wasn't happy with the sound, the production at his concert in, in Lagos, which, you know, he spoke publicly about. But he said you were one of the reasons that made him climb that stage, even though he knew that that wasn't up to par. Talk to me about your relationship with Bonner Boy. What's that relationship like? And why you wanted him, regardless of the quality, to still entertain the fans? Shout out to Bonner Boy. Man, um, I'm, I'm short of words because, like, you know, it's showing me a lot of... Hey. I love, I love Bonner Boy. You know? He's been spam for years. Like, so meeting him, you know, it's like, you know, deja vu. Absolutely. Absolutely. You've been thinking before. Bonner Boy, you know, 100% for me. Hmm. Like, more than 100% for me. Oh. Huh. Yes. Yes. If not, she was, I don't go out. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Now, coming into 2020, you've talked about it, you know, um, the loss that the family suffered, but bouncing back with two incredible packages, album. Now you're in the UK, you're about to headline the Indigo 2 to shut that down. You're about to go into Germany, go and, you know, go and tour out there as well. The music has been oncoming. The headline news has been incredible as well. I see, I go on social media every single time and it's almost like Ishei vibes versus this person. Ishei vibes versus that person. Ishei vibes versus this person. The names keep getting mentioned. Zinuleski, Ashake, Portimbo. I don't like talking about negativity and beefs, but this will be the question I'll ask you. Um, with those names, was there anything that you instigated yourself that you just felt like, nah, man, I, I'm going to go at anybody right now? Or was it a situation where, you know, things just came your way? I just, I just leave, leave everything like uh, for the public to see, you know. My music is just my music. I just bring... Yeah. I'm saying with coffee, it's like, you know, it's been in more in the soul, like, you know, I can't see what it is. Yes. So, like, the comparison, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really, really seeing it. Like, you know, because in the I'm, I'm she vibes, yeah, so I'm not really, really, really seeing it. But, you know, everybody's doing good. Like, man, we are all doing good for Alphabet. Absolutely. Yeah, we're all brothers also. Absolutely. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. Need you train. I like that. I like that. I like that. So finally, I saw a clip of you. I don't know where you went to, but they said maybe you went home and you stood like on the fence at home. Just, you just, you were just taking doles of cash, just throwing it to the people. Where was that? And, and you know, what was that feeling like to give back to your people? <laughs> you know, that, that was it, like giving back to my people. Though. Hey. If I also give out to my people, I know how to like, you know, package it. That's like, you know, everyone just know that's my daddy's house. Mm. So everyone was there to greet me like, oh, she, well, I couldn't go into the club because there was too much on there. And, you know, I don't want the security to, uh, say, yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of so but I was it through, through how I had to do it. Hey, hey. It's nothing too serious. Nothing too serious. Just a playful thing. Yes. We like that. And finally, before we wrap up, you're in London. It's, it's uh, you know, it's a little bit cold. 
it's not summer, you know. Uh, how has the London ladies been uh, treating she, the vibe machine? <laughs> not to go outside. <laughs> go ahead. But you know, we you know that. Oh, I don't know girls pull off from my door that. I'm going to stand here and pull out here up on me. Oh, Zeke, vibe boy. What can people expect from that show? August 11th, the Indigo 2 is about to be a madness. Shay vibes in London. No Shay, no freaking vibes. You already know the vibes. What can people expect from it? No massive energy. 100% energy. 200% energy. Eh. I'm bringing the whole story, like, you know, mm. this time I've waited all my life, you know. So it's like, I'm bringing my whole energy to the stage, just step around, vibe to that, like, you know, call. I really mean it. Like, this is my first day I first started in London, so I'm good. It's that simple. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Afrobeats podcast, and it's the incredible. <laughs> Thanks for coming, my brother. So proud of you. Um, you've got the whole world ahead of you. I've seen greats from their early 20s, um, and I've seen what they've eventually become. You know, I've seen Burner Boy kickstart from the beginning. I've seen Whiskey kickstart. I've seen David Oak at age 18 and eventually seen them become greats. So I'm excited to see you as a young man and to start stepping into your own glory. Don't let nothing take you away from your game, negativity, beef, or women. All right. Stay energized. You heard that. <laughs> yeah, always, always.